Welcome to My Grandpa's Train, part two of the Metal Steam series. Today on my workbench is a Gilbert HO pre-war era Hudson steam engine. This is the first of three of these engines that I will be rebuilding. This will likely be the longest and most detailed video of the three. The second and third will be much shorter and will only show differences between these three engines. This engine needs a bath, a motor rebuild, and if necessary, replacement of the wiring inside. Let's get started. In order to get the shell off the boiler and the tender, the tender is relatively easy. There is three screws, one in the back and two in the front, and those are removed and the shell for the tender comes off pretty easily. Now, in order to get the boiler shell off the locomotive, there are four screws underneath one of which is here, located with the pilot truck, so you have to unscrew the screw holding on the pilot truck. And then there are two screws, one here, holding on the part of the frame of the side rod mechanisms, one on each side, so this one and one on the other side. And then there is one more screw, and I'll try to show you, way up in the boiler of the locomotive, hiding in the firebox, you can see the screw hole where I finally found it and removed it. Actually, it took me long enough to find. There's another YouTuber who's worked on this locomotive named Classic Model Trains, his channel. And I actually had to go back and rewatch his video. I've watched it a couple times to remember where that last screw was. And they hit it very well in this engine. It's, it was buried way up in there. All right. Now that the screws are removed, oh, I also removed the wire handrails. And now that it is removed, the shell slides up and off. And this unit does have a headlight. So the headlight is up in the front here. It's a full-size headlight. And we can see our drive mechanism and the motor. This is a spur gear drive fueled coil AC motor. All right, the next things I'm going to do is work on disassembling everything, stripping it down so that I can take it to the sink and wash it up real good. As of right now, I did try testing the motor and it does not operate. So that will require some diagnosis. I've never worked on one of these before. This is going to be a lot of fun. So the next step in the disassembly is to remove the boiler weight out of the locomotive shell and uh, it slides out of the front. Unfortunately, it looks like I am actually going to have to rewire this locomotive. The old wiring is drying out and cracking badly enough that I may have short circuits on my hand. I usually like to keep the original wiring in place if it's good. This case might not be. Now the wire that runs from the light bulb to the tender for power for the headlight has been spliced and the yellow section of the wire is bad so I'm just going to cut it right at the joint. The cloth wire that runs from through the boiler is still good. Now that the shell is removed and separate I can work on the chassis and the next things that I need to do are remove the screws that hold the motor assembly together. So there are four screws that hold the motor. Two of them hold on this plate on the side. And the two long screws run through the field assembly. Once all the screws are removed, the motor assembly can separate from the frame. Here is the field coil assembly and the armature. Oh yes, so here, this is um, a thick wire. So these wires actually just hold the brush springs in place. They just tin them and that's what holds the springs in. So I'm gonna carefully remove that wire. This thing is coated in ancient grease. If I can even get it to Well, as I suspected, these old rubber wires are done for, so I will be removing that and replacing all of the wiring on this engine. Actually, the cloth wire versions are better because the cloth doesn't crack or disintegrate over time. 
so unless cloth wire has exposed copper to cause a short, it's really still safe to use for low voltage applications like this. Oh, okay, that didn't take too much. So this assembly, the wires are stuck in place, so I'm just going to leave those alone for now. I actually was able to just slide the, the rotor and the commutator out from its holder and the brushes followed on the inside. So these are some very large brushes for this motor and this one's got a chunk out of the side. Here's our rotor. Yeah, it's covered in carbon dust and grease. But that should clean up very nicely, I think. Same goes for our stator and the field magnet. All right, I'm going to degrease this and we will be back when it has been degreased. So I hooked up, before I clean this, I hooked up uh, power to the two wires that go to the field coil and the field coil is actually still good. I can, uh, I can feel it, the voltage running through these. It's not shorting out, but I can feel it. And if I put a metal object, it's creating a magnetic field, which is what it's supposed to do. Well, and it's burning, so let's shut that off. I have the motor temporarily reinstalled so that I can test it before I replace the wires but I want to figure out this unusual reverse mechanism from the tender. Now, Gilbert offered these engines as kits to assemble, and I think this one was kit built for a couple reasons. For one, the commutator on the motor has a lot of wear on it, so this engine was heavily used. I think this engine was converted to run on DC. Second, the original Gilbert reverser was an electromechanical style device to change the polarity on the AC motors and was triggered by a DC pulse relay. None of that is present here except for what looks like a homemade bracket and what I'm guessing is an old bridge rectifier of some sort. When I jumper the wires the motor runs, but if I apply power to the input side nothing happens, so I think this rectifier is toast. And as I mentioned before, from what I understand, Gilbert used black cloth wire, not rubber wire, on an engine this old. This engine has an interesting motor arrangement where the motor runs a tiny idler gear in between the reduction gear. I found pictures of motors where this idler gear is not present, and the reduction gear is actually much larger. However, all of the examples that I have are arranged this way. So with just a drop of oil on the motor, it really loosened up. It runs quite good, actually. Of course, it runs better with solid connections. This is the wiring harness. And these insulators are completely shot. They're dried up, hard, crispy. I have new wires installed to both the field and armature, and I also repaired the broken drive linkage using a tiny brass nail as a rivet. I don't have any way to rivet anything this small, but instead I did do what all the other joints have, which is a lump of solder to keep the pins in place. It worked good and matches the rest of the locomotive, so I think this was an appropriate way to fix it. All right, time to begin the final assembly. I have all the gears greased and properly lubricated, and I am ready to put the boiler back on. For the headlight, I replaced the bad section of wire. And now I just replace all four screws. I'm using this handy little screw grabber tool. Works good to align the screws into the holes. It's particularly helpful for the one deep inside the cab. Now I will do a final bench test before I take it to the tracks. I have the motor wired in series now, so hopefully it will be stuck running in forward on the track.
great. I managed to wire it in reverse. I wasn't too happy with the wiring I did, so between the last shot and this, I rewired it again and this time made sure it goes forward. Let's test it with a post-war American Flyer Transformer. This is more like what I want to see. I'll give it a couple laps on the inside track, and then I will hook it up to my set of Gilbert passenger cars, four post-war and one pre-war. The Gilbert cars I have completely upgraded to Katie couplers, but the engine has the original Gilbert coupler still in place, so I temporarily swapped in a matching coupler on the baggage car. That's why there is a long gap between the tender and the car. I hope you enjoyed this fun repair journey of the oldest operating locomotive in my collection. If you would, why not subscribe if you haven't and like this video to help out my channel and maybe leave a comment too. I have two more engines like this to do, but that will focus mostly on the reverse mechanism. Until next time, thanks for watching.